Um, okay, we have started. Okay, right. Let's pray. Huh? Father, we thank you, Lord. Thank you for for this day that you've given us, Lord. Thank you that every day is a gift from you, Lord. Time is such a gift from you, God. And we just pray that we will use it well, Father God. That we will steward it well. And Master, we we just commit today's uh, sessions, Lord, all the classes into your mighty hands. Father, we thank you that, Lord, you have a plan and purpose, Lord, for each of these sessions. And I pray that that will be fulfilled, Lord, in our lives, Lord. I pray that you'll write your word upon our hearts, God. Let our minds, Lord, grasp, get a revelation and understanding of who you are and and uh, the immenseness, Lord, of your, of your word of the revelation of your word, God, and your promises, and the character and the heart and nature of who you are, Father God. I pray will be written in our hearts, Master, that there be an impartation, God. Uh, I pray that, Lord, you will do this by your spirit, and we thank you that we have this privilege, Lord, of drawing near to you. We thank you. In Jesus' matchless name we pray. Amen. Amen. Let me just okay. So last class we we studied about um, the different expressions of uh, praise, right? Um, scriptural expressions of praise, and we looked at the dynamics of praise. We looked at uh, the power of praise. And the scriptural expressions of praise, right? Okay. Um, okay. Hey, there's a place here. Boaz, someone is. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, sit comfortably. Uh, and uh, we have two hours. Okay. Right. So we looked at, uh, you know, the, that aspect of praise, right? Scriptural expressions of praise. And I hope that that kind of uh, changes our experience um, of praise and worship. Right? It should. Right? Whatever we are learning, uh, whatever understanding that we are getting, uh, you know, let's try and put into practice. Right? Every time we get an opportunity to uh, praise the Lord, to worship Him, and maybe on our own, or maybe with people. Okay, so let's try and put that into practice. Okay, hey guys, when class is happening, I'd like you to focus, not talk with each other, right? Okay, if you want to ask anything, you ask me. Right? Any doubts about the notes or anything, um, brother? There, what's your what's your name? What's your name? Sorry. Yeah. Do you have any doubts about the notes or anything? No. Okay. Yeah. So I just like you to focus, concentrate not talk among yourselves, okay? Okay, okay. so let's look at the next chapter, which is uh, chapter 5, which is about worship, right? So what is worship all about, right? See, many times we use this praise and worship interchangeably, right? Praise and worship, uh, Hindi, Stuti Aradhana, right? We use it interchangeably, and uh, we use it to, you know, mean the same thing, right? And yes, in a way it is, because it is coming to God, it is drawing to God, it is acknowledging who God is, etc. And it is giving ourselves to Him, right? And all that. But but really, if you see, both are two different words and both have two different pictures of what that expression is, right? When it comes to worship. So let's look at what worship is, right? Okay? So uh, if you look at the dictionary, if you look at the language, right? Uh, typically in the English language, you see that worship is intense love or admiration. It is a service showing reverence, which means respect, deep respect. It is um, to bow down, to have a sense of awe, right? to bow low, to bring ourselves down. Okay. So that is, uh, that is worship. So you see the different picture, right? Is there a difference? In the expression of praise and expression of worship, right? There is, right? Where praise is very extroverted, right? It is, it is something that we uh, we cannot help but verbalize, meaning you say it out, you speak it out, you say it out, and in terms of expression, also, you know, physically, you demonstrate it, right? 
we looked at even those Hebrew words, it's very extroverted. Whereas when we look at worship, the word worship, we look, we'll also look at uh, you know certain words which bring out the picture of what worship is. We see that, well, it, it, it is intense, which means it's the opposite of cold or you know uh, half-hearted, and it is intense. It's love and admiration, it's desire. It is also reverence. Okay, what, is, what does reverence mean? Reverence means deep respect, right? Awe, which means, you know, it's literally that, you know, your mouth's open, awe. You know, if, you, if you want to think of that word, what does that word describe, awe? It just means, you know, open mouth's admiration, right? So, in awe of someone. So that is worship. That's how the dictionary, you know, uh, refers to it. It, it. It's to honor, like we said, the first session itself. It's to give value to. It comes from that old, uh, the word worship in English comes from that old, old English word worthship, meaning giving worth, giving value to something, giving value to someone. Okay. So it comes from that. Now, um, when we look at the definition, we can't really. You know, define. Okay, this is what worship is. Okay, I know in physics and science we, you know, we have definitions. Right? I remember the first time I heard about definitions, and there was a test, and there was, you know, I had to write define this, this, this. So I just went and gave my own answers. Right, I explained things, but a definition is very, you know, this is how it is. It's very specific, right? So which means it says when you know you define a human being, it's very specific. You can't just give explanations, you know, you can't give descriptive answers. So it's a very concise, precise thing. So when we look at worship, can we be very precise and say this is what worship is, this is what you know, worship is not? Right? It goes beyond any kind of human definition, right? Because it, by a definition, you can actually analyze and say, this is what it is, this is what it is not. Right? But it goes beyond definition. Okay. Um, there are, uh, you know, if you look at Abraham, uh, Genesis chapter 22 and verse 5. Um, Abraham says, okay, I'm going to go worship on this mountain and we'll come back. Right. That's uh, what's what he says his servants. He takes Isaac and then he says, we're going to going to this mountain, we're going to worship, and then we'll come back. Okay. So that word used there is a word shakha okay, in, in Hebrew, which means to to low, to bring yourself low. To it means even to prostrate, like to fall. Right. So that's what he's saying. You know, I'm we are going to bow down, we're going to fall down, worship God, and we'll come back. Okay, so that picture. That posture is there in that word. So he's saying, I will go, we will worship, and we will come back. The same word is used in the other places also where Job, Job 1 20, or uh, David, when he said, you know, in 2 Samuel 12 20, the same word, shaka, is used, which means to bow down, which means to bring yourself low, which means to even, you know, just fall down flat, prostrate on the ground. So that is the posture of worship. So why why does one do that? Right? It is, it is. It comes from a place of surrender. It comes comes from a place of deep respect. Right? Um, yeah. You can just do that because it's a cultural thing to do. You know, to bow yourself down and to bring yourself low, or even to prostrate. But then, it is a posture of extreme humility. Right? We are humbling ourselves completely. Fully, and then we are saying, "Okay, I worship you because you are you know, worthy of this kind of respect. You are worthy of this kind of honor, right?" And that is why the Lord reserves that that kind of worship only for Himself, right? From another human being, He says, "Okay, this is not for any other. It's not for any other person. It's not for any other entity because only God is worthy of." Us humbling ourselves to such an extent. It's a it's a it's a posture of deep humility. It's a posture of deep respect. Right? So where you're saying, you know, I, I'm nothing. 
um, before you, I'm, I'm, I just want to humble myself. I want to bring myself low. Just think of that. You know, you're in front of someone. Suppose somebody comes and you're just falling flat on the ground. It's a, you're just abasing yourself. You're saying, you know, I'm humbling myself completely. And not, we don't do that on a regular basis, right? We don't. But this is what it is. So God says, you know, this is exclusively for Him. Those who worship Him must worship in spirit and in truth. And the uh, the other uh, word, Greek word, which is used, is proskunio, which means to, you know, completely fall down, you know, flat on the ground. Right. So that's the posture. That should be the posture of our heart. Now, even though physically we may not be doing it, but that should be the posture of our heart internally. You know, that is the posture when we worship Him. Okay, so let's look at um, if if we want to explain what is worship. Okay, a few verses exp you know help us um, understand, right? Um, okay, so when we say what is worship, okay, the first thing is that. It is the recognition of who God is. It is to recognize, right? What does it mean to recognize? You know, you you meet someone, you 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 know, outside Bible college, and you recognize the person. Okay, what happens when you recognize? You say, "Oh, I recognize you from Bible college," or "I recognize you from from church or from my hometown." What are we doing? Sorry. We respect. No, when when you just say, "Okay, I recognize this person," what are we doing? You identify. You are aware. Okay, this person is so and so. Yeah. So that's the second thing. Right? First of all, you know, we we are aware. Um, this person is so and so. May probably you, you know, recognize that person from from their by their name, by their face, whatever it is. You know, you recognize, you you are aware that this is so and so, right? So, worship is recognition first of all. You know, we, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, so we reveals, yeah. So that's the thing. So, hmm. So, um, so the question is, okay, is if somebody is not worshiping the true God, it's, is it because God has not revealed Himself? And uh, so, so when we look at Scripture, we see that God has actually revealed Himself, you know, in various ways. Like even nature itself talks about the fact that there's a Creator, like generally speaking, right? And God is in the if you can say if he's in the, I don't want to use the word business, but he, you know, his heart is to reveal himself to people and the plan of salvation, the plan of redemption. Right? Either you know, it it could be through us, right, as the church, as fellow believers um, in the Lord, or even sovereign ways. Right? So he does that. So he is reaching out. He is, you know. Now the 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 second part of it is that are we aware? Okay. Are we aware of it? Do we acknowledge that? So when I, when somebody, you know, there's a knowledge of God that is, you know, somebody shares or a revelation. Now, do I receive it or do I don't? You know, I can. Um, one is ignorance, so I don't. You know, I'm ignore, ignore, I ignore it, ignore God. But then there is a revelation. Somebody shares, okay, this is who God is, you know. And do I receive it or do I resist? So that's the other issue. So, so when I receive, I I acknowledge, then that's that begins the part of worship. What worship is? It's a recognition. I identify. I'm aware. Then I acknowledge. What does acknowledge mean? Acknowledge means yeah, I say yes. Yeah, this is who he is. Yeah, this is this is God. Now, this is what He has said, and this is who He is. Let's look at this scripture, Psalm ninety-five, verse six, uh, verses six and seven. Like the psalmist says, "Oh, come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our Maker, for He is our God, 
and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. So, so what is the psalmist do saying? You know, he's he's actually encouraging, he's exhorting, inviting others to come and worship. Okay, so he's saying, oh, come, let us worship and bow down. And he's giving the reason. What is it? For he is our God, right? He is our God. What is he doing? He's acknowledging, right? He's aware, he's acknowledging, oh, come, he is our God. And, uh, you know, let us come before him in worship. He's acknowledging he is our God. And he also says that um, he is our maker. He's the creator. So he acknowledges God as the creator. He's acknowledging, yes, he is our God. Right, worthy of worship and honor and so on. So, um, and also saying, you know, in the same, like, this is who we are. We are the people of his pasture, right? We are his creations, right? So he's acknowledging that this is who God is. So the worship begins with the recognition of who God is, right? Acknowledging, being aware of, and that's how it starts, right? So it means that. There is a revelation, there is an acknowledgement, there is a recognition of who God is. So worship is rec recognition of who God is. You know, if, it's, uh, if you look at um, Hebrews 11 and verse 6, it says, Without faith it is impossible to please him, for he who comes to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Okay, so what is the first part? Whoever comes to him, draws near to him, must believe that he is. That's the first thing, you know. Believe that he is, meaning that he is, he exists, that he is all that he says he is, right? Must say that, must believe that he is, and about his character. He is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him, right? So that's something that we see. So it's a recognition of who God is, recognition of his characteristics, recognition of his goodness. And in, in our worship, in our times of corporate worship, this is what we voice out. You know, this is what is there deep in our hearts. Oh, I, I recognize his goodness. I recognize his faithfulness. right? And in turn, our response is heartfelt worship. Right? So worship is recognition of who God is. I hope that helps. Right? right? So the second thing that we see is that worship is reverence for God. So reverence, we said, is you know, deep respect, okay, not just respect, but deep respect is reverence. Worship is reverence for God, right? So to treat with adoration and utmost fearful respect, um, to have that, to have that quality. So we cannot worship without reverence, without rev without this deep respect, we cannot worship. So with the understanding of who God is, with the recognition of who God is, comes automatically in our hearts a reverence for God, a deep respect for Him. Oh, this is who God is. So I respect you, I honor you, right? I revere you. So it's deep reverence, uh, deep respect for God. You look at uh, Psalm 5 and verse 7. It says, but as for me, I will come into your house in the multitude of your mercy in fear of you, I will worship towards your holy temple in fear of you. Right? And that fear is a reverential fear of God. Okay. So sometimes we think, okay, God is my friend, God is my father, and why should I fear? Right? Well, this fear is a different kind of fear. It's a fear which is which comes out of deep respect. It's a reverential fear of God. God. And we are supposed to have it, right? For so the Bible says, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and knowledge of the Most High, right? So we are supposed to have that fear. And this fear, it's not an unhealthy fear, but it's actually a very reverential fear, right? So um, this is worship, to have that fear of God, right? Psalm 96, verse 9, O oh, worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Tremble before him all the earth. Okay. So we have these different pictures in the book of Psalms where it talks about worship and we see that there is this reverence, there is this awe, there is this fear, reverential fear which is there um, uh, in as, as part of worship, as worship itself, right? So we see that. Okay. So worship is a recognition of who God is, worship is a reverence for God, right? 
uh, deep respect for God. And worship is, uh, thirdly, worship is communion with God. Okay, So when we, when we hear the word communion, what does it remind you of? Huh? Holy communion, right? So that is something that we, we are reminded. What is holy communion? Hmm. Yeah. So it's a uh, it's it's symbolic of the Lord's death, burial, and resurrection, right? Um, yeah. About the finished work on the cross. Yeah. So, but why do you? Yeah. It's fellowship. Fellowship with. Okay. Um. Yeah. So but the word uh, fellowship. Sorry, the word fellowship is koinonia, which means partnership. Which means, you know, this friendship. This it means this deep, you know, deep oneness and so on. So in communion, like with the uh, with the elements of bread and you know wine, and we are actually saying, Lord, when you died, I died. When you rose again, I rose again. And you're saying that, Lord, what you did on the cross, I'm. I'm a partaker of it. I'm a, in fellowship. I'm a partaker of it. And that's why we call it you know, Holy Communion, the Lord's Table. I'm a partaker of what you did for me. I'm, I partake of it. You know, I'm, in, I'm in fellowship with it. Right? So the death, it's affecting me. The, the, the burial, it has affected me. How? With my old sin nature, it has, it has put to death. Right? And when you rose again, Whatever you accomplished on the cross, again, I'm in fellowship with that. I receive that. And that's why the Bible says, you know, we became partakers of his divine nature. Right? By these precious promises, we became partakers of his divine nature. So, so that's the, the communion part of it. So the thing is that worship is actually communion with God. Worship is that deep fellowship with God. You know, we have you know all kinds of people in our lives, right? We have um Maybe the newspaper person who comes and gives newspaper in the morning, or you know, people who are acquaintances. Right? You may know them by name, you may not know them. Right? They, you know, someone who who's there, they're an acquaintance. You don't know them. They don't know you. You you are you know them by face, okay, but you don't know them very well. You know what they do, etc. Then you have friends, right? Um, friends. Then you have a deeper level of friendship who could be a confidant, right? A friend with whom you can share your deep things, you know, maybe your pain and whatever, you know, the, that you're going through, you could share, you have a confidant. So we have deep, different levels of friendship even. So the, the Lord has called us for communion, for fellowship with him. And when we say worship, worship is deep, communion with the Lord. Okay. This verse, you know, John chapter 4, verse 24, it brings that out. Right? When the Lord Jesus talked about worship, right? he says, God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. Okay. So in spirit here, it talks about the spirit of man, the innermost being of man, it could also be, you know, since we have the indwelling presence of the Holy Spirit, that we are we worship as led by the Holy Spirit or prescribed by the Holy Spirit, but out of our spirit, right? So it is deep fellowship, deep communion uh, with God, and it is not, which is the opposite of something that is superficial. Okay, so just superficial, which is uh, superficial meaning, you know, just the surface level. And when it comes to acquaintances, it is a surface level, you know, relationship, right? You say, hey, how are you? Ah, oh, fine. How are you? I'm fine. And that's it, right? We just keep going. But the Lord has called us not for an acquaintance kind of a relationship, but he's called us for a deep communion, fellowship, right? And worship is actually that. Worship is not just an acquaintance kind of a relationship or even an encounter, but it's a deep fellowship, something that is 
you know, from the innermost being, from thing that is from our hearts, which means that we share to him, not that he does not know, but we share our innermost uh, feelings and emotions and, and uh, you know, thoughts, our fears, everything with him. Right? And that is worship. The psalmist, when he, when he, in, in many places, he cries out. It's very real. It's very authentic, right? He doesn't hold back. He's he's so real with God. And if it's a fear, he's communicating that. He's sharing that. Now, if it's a frustration, he's pouring that also out to the Lord. Right? Nothing hidden. So worship is that you know, innermost being. What we are going through, you know, so there's no need to put on a mask or pretense before God. Okay. Sometimes, you know, all these cult cultural, religious culture itself becomes a mask. Right? That becomes a mask. Okay, if it's a praise, you know, I just need to do this hallelujah, praise the Lord, and I need to do that, I need to lift my hands, and I need to shout. You know, it becomes a mask. When there's no depth in our relationship with Him, it becomes a mask. It's just something that we put on and then we finish and then we go, keep going. But deep within, you know, we have not really connected with God the way He wants it to be. We have not really worshipped. Right? So we see that it's something deeper where we are not afraid before Him and to reveal our heart to Him. Right, our hearts to him. Yeah, yeah, Shani, you have a question. Go ahead, please. Yeah, I don't know. It says God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. Yeah. What do you mean by in truth? I don't understand yeah. that part. Yeah, so in truth, which means that um, um, there are many things that we can look at, facets of it, which means that there is no pretense. We don't worship him in pretense, we don't worship him hypocritically, um, like, you know, think something in our hearts and say something else to him. So in truth, like sincere uh, truth, uh, without hiding anything, without holding, withholding anything, without putting on, an, uh, putting on an act in front of him. So that's what it is. The other facet of truth is also where John 17, 17, where the Lord Jesus says, you know, uh, thy word is truth. Right? So we worship as according our, to the word of God, as prescribed in the word of God. Hey, God is worthy of respect. That is, God is worthy of honor. Uh, and, uh, you know, these are all the perfectly um, scriptural expressions uh, of praise and worship and so on. So, in truth means that as it is prescribed in the word of God. So, for example, I might have my own understanding, my own opinion of how God needs to be worshipped. Like, remember, we were looking at that example of uh, in this particular church, well, the pastor said, no clapping of hands because God is to be revered. So he said, clapping of hands is, is an expression of whatever, you know, he thought. But then when you look at truth, we see that the Psalms is full of expressions of clap your hands, uh, you, know, you people. And so, um, so that is truth, right? So we worship him in truth. We, we encounter this truth and we say, okay, this is a valid expression, which means that, oh, hey, now I can actually applaud the Lord. I can be free in his presence. I can, you know, lift up his name in this manner also. So that's the aspect of truth, right? Okay, thank you. Okay. So worship, again, is a deep communion with God. Worship in spirit and in truth. Okay. So we are, what are we looking at? We're looking at, you know, we looked at what praise was. And then we're looking at what worship is. So we see that, you know, unlike praise, which can be a little distant because you're saying who God is, you know, God, you know, um, this is who God is. We are actually in worship. Our, you know, our communication, our, our expression of worship is very direct. It is to him directly. We are talking to him, right? We are singing to him. We are not talking about him. Is there a difference about someone and to someone? Right? There is a difference. Right? You're saying, okay, this is, I think this is what that person is like. Or you're saying, okay, I believe this is who he is. Or I know this is who that person is. This is who she is, etc. But the difference is you're talking to 
you know you're not addressing someone about god but you're addressing god himself right so so that is that aspect of worship it's a deep communion uh, with him right okay um and fourth one you know this is this is again something that we saw earlier that worship is our response worship is our response right what is our response and what is in it in response to right it's in response to god's revelation of himself right when god introduces himself this is who i am or he reveals himself show him shows himself and you know this is who i am this is what i am in his glory in his majesty um in his power and so on our response our automatic response to that our heartfelt response to that is worship right for example if you look at revelation 1 okay verse verses 12 let's let's just read through right verses 12 to 17 it's there in our notes um Okay this is John right John is having this apostle John he's having this encounter with God and and this is what we see then I turned to see the voice that spoke with me and having turned I saw okay so something visual he's having a vision he saw he saw this, and he goes on to ex- describe what he saw seven golden lampstands and in the midst of the seven lampstands one like son of man clothed with a garment down to the feet and girded about the chest with a golden band his head and hair were white like wool as white as snow and his eyes like a flame of fire his feet were like fine brass as if refined in a furnace and his voice as the sound of many waters okay so this is describing the person whom he had a vision of whom he had his encounter with right and um, it's something majestic right and um, and we see that it's even scary his flames were i mean eyes were like flames of fire and his voice like sound of many waters which is like a vault waterfall right um i'm sure you know we've been close to a waterfall even stood under a waterfall right? it's noisy right it's like the sound of many waters you can think of it's huge waterfalls and i've seen videos of this niagara falls and you know victoria falls and it's like a huge and then you can't you know it's a deafening roar sound of the waters falling right and it says here that his voice was like the sound of many waters right okay then it goes on to say what he had in his hand he had in his right hand seven stars out of his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword and his countenance which is talking about the face was like the sun shining in its strength okay verse 17 interesting it says and when i saw him i fell as dead when i saw him i fell as dead but he laid his right hand on me saying to me do not be afraid i am the first and the last so this was john's encounter he had this vision he saw the son of god as a jesus in all his majesty in all his glory and his response was this physically you know he just fell down prostrate before god he says i fell down as dead and he said do not be afraid i am the first and the last you know uh, many times in in uh, when he read a, in the book of daniel also daniel has these encounters like um god says something or god gives a word and he just falls down right the physical strength seems to have just gone out of his body and right? he just falls down uh before him so just to again tell us this worship is a response to a revelation of god it could be falling down it could be our heart you know being stirred up with adoration with awe of him you know how can god be so wonderful how can god be so holy how can he be you know so uh so powerful and all that so it's a revelation which which touches our heart and in response to that is worship okay let's look at another verse um revelation 4 verses 9 to 11 this is the the you know it talks about the throne room uh, and the lord again says you know come up here and i'm going to show you and and all this this is what is happening there um 
sometime in the future, right? Whenever the living creatures give glory and honor and thanks to him who sits on the throne, throne who lives forever and ever, the 24 elders fall down before him who sits on the throne and worship him who lives forever and ever and cast their crowns before the throne saying, you are worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power for you created all things and by your will they exist and were created. So you see this expression of deep reverence. You see this, you know, uh, expression of worship. So it's a their response to this encounter with God, and they fall down, cast their crown, crowns before Him, and out come these words of great humility and uh, saying, "You are worthy, Lord, to receive glory and honor." Yeah, yeah. Go ahead, uh, Shani. You have a question? Yeah, that was my uh, my question because I know that. From last yeah. time, um, from the last class we ended, I know you put a scripture about Revelation nineteen four about mm -hmm. living. It says about living creatures, and this one says living creatures. So, is living creatures is that everybody in heaven? I mean, what is that? Because I know before I've read it before, like in Revelation nineteen four, mm -hmm. um, it's in that. I know you went over that last class, but I did. I read about. I didn't quite understand what yeah. living creatures is. Yeah, about the um, living creatures. Okay, so. Um, we okay. We won't get into it right now, but uh, we are actually doing um, a series right now in um, in church uh, on the Bible end times, end times prophecy, and just this Sunday, past Sunday, we looked at uh, you know what these living creatures actually represent. Um, so there is this um, these living creatures actually representing nations, and we saw that in um, in the book of Daniel also. Right, so representing nations, but um, you know, in Revelation 19 that you're talking about, um, it it talks about the um, the hosts in heaven. Um, it's 19:4. 19:4, yeah, 19:4. Four, uh, four living creatures fell down worship. Yeah, so it talks about the hosts in heaven. It talks about the seraphim. It talks about these angelic beings. Right, so um, so that is that is what uh, the Bible describes them as. So yeah, so that's the thing. Okay, thank you. Okay, yeah, but in other other places you might encounter these living creatures arising from the sea and so on. So um, that's symbolic of some nations. Um, and so I just wanted to make that clarity. But here specifically, it's talking about the heavenly beings. Right? Okay, right. So. Um, so when we when we are, when we look at all this, you know, recognition, reverence, and uh, you know, um, for God and our response to God, so we see that worship is something that is, you know, that is something deep, deeper, right? It's not something casual, right? It is the opposite of all that. It is something that is intentional, something that is sincere, something that you do with wholehearted. Not half-heartedly, not holding back. Right? So that gives us, you know, that the understanding, true perspective of what worship is. Now, when we look at John chapter four, verses twenty-three and twenty-four, we looked at that verse again, right? Who says these words in John chapter four, verse twenty-three, twenty-four? The Lord Jesus. Who's he speaking to? The Samaritan woman. Okay, I think we all of us need to be clear about this, right? Uh, especially when we're doing this course, praise and worship. These verses we need to be really sure of, right? John chapter four, verse twenty-three. Um, and the Lord Jesus saying, um, "The hour is coming, and now is, when the true worshippers will worship the Father in spirit and truth, for the Father is seeking such to worship Him." Okay, verse twenty-four. God is spirit. And those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. Okay, so the Lord is giving that, uh, you know, if you want to say that this is how it should be done, a condition, this is how it must be done, worship in spirit and truth. Okay, so we looked at what in spirit means, out of our innermost being, uh, uh, out of our spirit, right? it can even be as prompted and led and guided by the Holy Spirit, right? So this is how it needs to be. And in truth, right, which means that it is not hypocritical, not in pretense, as prescribed by the word of God, 
right? According to the word of God and so on, right? So, so there is this word, which is in, in the Greek, we see that there is this word which describes a kind of worship which has the right words, right? Which has the right words, which has the right songs, which has the right even gestures, posture, but it is worship which is disconnected. Okay? And the Lord Jesus spoke about that. Okay, so we'll take a break and then we'll come back to look at that.